Good morning YouTube. How y'all doing? This video is going to be pretty lengthy. Um, and I want to give you a couple of reasons why. Mainly is there's a lot of information. Two, there's a video clip that's going to be in this video as well of the senators actually talking about shutting HARP down. Okay. Now, and the people involved with HARP. But that does not mean that they're stopping their testing and it doesn't mean that they're not stopping anything. I've said from the very get-go that if we got them to stop HARP, they would have something new. And that's exactly what they've done. And they're not playing. They're trying to get the heat off of them. And that's really all they're really doing. And that's for sure. We have created from, from Jesse Ventura, Alex Jones, me, Dutch Sense, and several other people, Nick Baggage, brought a lot of heat to harp. And also brought a lot of negative power as well. Now, there's an article here in between these photos that I'm going to have the robot read in this this area. But I'm making all of this so you'll understand what the web page is and you can do it for yourself. Each one of these photos will take you uh, to a web page, a PDF. It's big in size. It's 200 and, well, let's just go look, 230 pages long, okay? It's a big page. Several different websites. This is just one. This is in three different locations of the same type of antenna. Now I also want to show you something else. This is not a video. This is just a screenshot. But the reason why I took the screenshot is to show you who actually put this story, started this story. And he's also the same guy that started the main story of Hart being shut down last year, which was a lie. Now, it may be coming to be true. It is not official as of yet. They're saying that it could be taken down. I will, you will see this video. But the reason why I'm showing it to you is the guy that actually put it up. He is the one, Mick West, is the one that's been in a couple of videos trying to debunk Harp. And he has been doing so from the very beginning. He is your main obstacle, people. And he is very... Mm, I, I'm not going to say he's super rich, but he's He's got serious money. Okay. Whether that means anything or not to anybody, I don't know. But I will tell you this. He was on a TV show. And the guy that does the experiment with harp, with a, a miniature harp, with moisture. He made, it was on a show and he tried to debunk it, which I got a video on one of my channels with that. It's been a while back. I may find it and put it on here. In fact, I think I will. I don't have any videos on here as yet, but there will be at least two. Um, this right here, this particular guy, is the biggest harp denier that's ever been with a lot of money. He has a place called Metabunk and he has a whole form 
on Dutch Sense. Yeah, he does. And a couple of other people about harp. But mainly that sense. And this guy thinks he knows everything there is. And he says, well, this box, in his little video, he says this box is hot. Well, what the fuck, dude? Them lights that he had at the top were hot, too. You'll see the video. But my point of it is, is this, folks. This guy is a total moron. He has no clue of what he's talking about half of the time. He don't even he don't even know the research. He don't even know what he's looking at. He only knows what people have told him and convinced him and for him to push this information because he can make money off of it. Now I'm not saying that it's wrong to make money. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just telling you you got some people that push it for the truth and try to make a dime off of it. And then you got people that push it to make a dime off of it when they already got plenty of money. For the last, since 2009, when I started on YouTube, I didn't make a dime, didn't ask for a donation. I didn't. And I still don't. Um, I do have ads on my page now, and I started that three months ago. Yes, three months ago. And why? Because I needed to. I fork out a lot of money for this web page. I fork out a lot of money for computers and software. It was the only way for me to pay for my situation and that's what I'm doing now I, I can't help it things change but each one of these photos like this one uh, and the next one I'm fixing to show you but as you can see as far as the eye can see you see antennas they're a little bit smaller in size. But does that mean anything? No. What it means is they change frequencies of which they're using now. And they're trying to do this in 3D, which that's new technology. And this is another little feel of antennas. And these antennas that you see here are not just antennas. They are an antenna. But these are what you would call a directional beam. In other words, it only transmits in the direction that it is pointing at. You see the angle that it's at? It's at an angle pointing to the hyanosphere in a certain direction. And there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's 12 of them. 12 of those in a row times 4. And depending on the exact frequency, which now I have not read all of this document yet, it's a big page. According to these antennas, they could be doing anywhere from 15 to 20, 20 dB gain. But in a hooray like this, that could be 20 dB gain per antenna. Not 10 like heart, but 20. So that gives you more output power. Does that make sense to you? I'm sure it does. It'll give you more power. And it being 3D. Hmm. But as you see, here's the array. You can count the antennas in here. Each little block, there's four of them here. Okay. And you can see transmitting. Well, 
It's actually telling us. 40 dB gain. That's 40 dB gain per antenna. <laughs> 40 dB gain. Holy shit. That's, that's a lot of gain, folks. In other words, if you only had 100 watts and 40 dB gain, uh, that's 4,000 watts. Exactly. 40, 40 dB gain times 100 is 4,000 watts. Hmm. That's just 100 watts. What if they were putting out 1,000 watts? Get my drift. You're talking about a, a, a serious amount of power, people, that this little system right here that you see could put out. 40 dB gain. Holy hell. If they got a 30,000 watt, I don't even want to calculate it for you. I mean, you're smart enough to figure out how much power it is. If they're putting out, if they're putting out 3.6 million times 40. You get me? Huh. But anyway, here's the links to three different PDFs that you can go to to explain this whole scenario. And all of these Photoshop photos that you see, each photo will take you to to this big link. What's on here? Now these other two, you need to go see yourself. They're smaller pages. And as you can see, they mapped it out. And down here is where a Senator tells you all about heart. I know a lot of you've seen it. I just doing it to refresh people's mind. And this. Yet again, is where they're telling us that it's going to be shut down in the summer. Click on that. It'll take you to the original link if that's where you'd rather go. Okay. Now, there's going to be more to this video. I hope you really stick around for the rest of it, especially for this. And for the article that I'm going to have read to you. But with that folks, remember one thing that I told you. I've told you all this at the beginning. I'm going to tell you again today. Heart may be shutting down. Maybe. <coughs> but there's one thing that you got to remember. It's not totally shutting down. They're just changing the area in which they're doing it, and they're changing the name in which they're doing it. In other words, they're going from the Air Force to some other name. Another, listen to my words closely, another corporate entity to take the heat off HARP. If that makes any sense to you at all, with Russia's woodpecker and the United States' harp, Russia closed their woodpecker down and opened several different more. Now the United States, because the heat's got so hot, just like it did on Russia about the woodpecker, they're going to do the same thing. It's propaganda to confuse your mind and make you think that there's nothing going on. Remember that. So with that, folks, much love to you. Have a great day. And from my cold, dead hands, abolish the Act of 1871. I wanted to ask a question, a couple of questions here about HARP, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. Uh, several of you at the table have a little bit of a piece here. As you know, this is located up in Alaska. It's currently funded 
by the Air Force Research Lab. It was formerly funded by the Office of Naval Research. One of the prime customers is DARPA, uh, which is currently running experiments at the facilities here. So uh, questions to, to several of you this morning. I'm told by the president of the University of Alaska that the Air Force has pulled its support for the facility and they're taking steps to, uh, to demolish it or take it down uh, this summer. He's making the argument that, uh, that there is other opportunities for us and uh, is trying to find a path where the university might be able to take title to the facility. I, I'd, I'd like to start with you, Dr. Prabhakar. I understand that um, a lot of folks here on the committee probably don't understand what HARP does. I think most Alaskans don't really know what HARP does or why the agency is involved in it. Uh, so a very brief explanation and then a more direct question. Would you be disappointed or would you lose something if, if HARP were to go away? Uh, Senator Markowski, as, as I think you know, uh, one of our programs has been using the HARP facility for the research that, that uh, it's pursuing. Uh, and my understanding is that we did get value out of that interaction. Um, the, the P in DARPA is projects, and uh, we're not in the business of doing the same thing forever. And so it's very naturally, as we conclude that work, uh, we're going to move on to other topics. So I, it's not, a, it's not a, uh, an ongoing need uh, for DARPA, despite the fact that we had actually gotten some good value out of that infrastructure in the past. Understood. Then... Uh, to, to uh, Dr. Walker and, and Mr. Schaefer then, it, Dr. Walker, your agency is currently running the facility. Um, uh, I've mentioned that it's our understanding through the president of UAF that, that the plans are to move forward and, and demolish the facility this summer. So the question to you is, is that accurate? Can you explain why? And then uh, perhaps to both you and Mr. Schaefer, is there any benefit in exploring a potential relationship with the University uh, of Alaska to, to perhaps take over the heart? Yeah, thank you, Senator. The Air Force has uh, gotten great value out of HARP in the past. We, uh, we, we took it over from the Navy and managed it and actually did a number of uh, experiment campaigns up there and uh, have finished our, our work that we're interested in doing up there. We've uh, Moving on to other ways of uh, managing the ionosphere, which the HARP was really designed to do, was to inject energy into the ionosphere, be able to actually control it. And, uh, but that work is, has been completed. Uh, the Air Force uh, has maintained the site for other government agencies to use for several years now. And uh, with DARPA completing their project, that's our last government customer that we have in the site. We have uh, put out a call government-wide for other agencies that had interest in uh, in managing the site or, or taking it over, and including going out to uh, academia and, uh, and seeing if there was any interest there. Uh, we have gotten interest from the university uh, in Fairbanks. However, the, uh, the, the, the interest we have is that they will run it if we fund it, which is uh, unfortunately in this uh, uh, fiscal environment we're in right now, this is not an area that we have any need for in the future and don't see that it would be good use of Air Force S&T funds in the future. So our, our position has been that uh, if there's not somebody who wants to take over the, uh, the management and the funding of the site, then the Air Force has no future need and that we do plan to, uh, to uh, do a, a, a dismantle of the, uh, the system in the future after we make appropriate notifications. When you say in the future, do you anticipate that it would be this summer then, or would there perhaps be more time for the university to try to figure something out? We would prefer to start this summer. Uh, we would like to get the critical equipment out of the site before the, the winter. The harsh winter in Alaska uh, does lead to a, a very costly winterization uh, to maintain the uh, site, and we'd like to avoid that if we can. Okay. D Mr. Schaefer, if you have any comments on that? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I'm torn on this because my background is as an atmospheric scientist, and I think the facility is, is just a world-class facility. That said, uh, we've worked very hard with the Air Force, uh, with the Office of Science and Technology Policy over the last 18 to 24 months to find another sponsor for this because it really 
uh, as you've heard the, the other uh, people at the table, we, the department, have gotten the research value out that we need for the facility. We've also worked with University of Alaska Fairbanks to get some other person to pick up the long-term, just pure scientific research that HARP, uh, HARP offers the promise of. But with all the other issues and problems and challenges facing the department at this time, we just don't see that that investment over a long-term period is where we would prioritize our investment. So we support, we've been working with other agencies, uh, trying to get agencies like National Science Foundation, Department of Commerce, who runs the National uh, Ocean and Atmospheric uh, Administration, to pick up the HARP facility. No one else wants to step up to the bill, ma'am. While HAARP and weather control has been called a conspiracy theory by the mainstream media and government officials, during a Senate hearing on Wednesday, David Walker, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Science, Technology and Engineering, dropped a bombshell in answer to a question asked by Lisa Murkowski in relation to the dismantling of the $300 million high-frequency active auroral research program in Gaikin this summer. Walker said this is not an area that we have any need for in the future and it would not be a good use of Air Force research funds to keep HAARP going. We're moving on to other ways of managing the ionosphere, which the HAARP was really designed to do, he said. To inject energy into the ionosphere, to be able to actually control it. But that work has been completed. Many believe HAARP was created and has been used for weather control with enough juice to trigger hurricanes, tornadoes and earthquakes and comments such as the spring about the question of whether conspiracy theorists are more on target than anyone has admitted to date. This is not the first time a public official has acknowledged that HAARP and weather control is not only possible, but has been and continues to be used as a superweapon, as evidenced by a statement in 1997 by former U.S. Defense Secretary William Cohen, where he said others terrorists are engaging even in an eco-type of terrorism, whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves, so there are plenty of ingenious minds, out there that are at work. Finding ways in which they can wreak terror upon other nations it's real, and that's the reason, why we have to intensify our counter-terrorism efforts. Is it still just a conspiracy theory, if public officials admit it is true?